All right, folks, we're going to go ahead and get started here. Uh, thanks, everybody, for uh, coming who has come thus far. Uh, hopefully, we'll get some more people in here. Uh, I will say that uh, there should be uh, five sessions worth of uh, people in here, so that actually adds up to 100 people. Uh, so since I've only got five thus far, that's uh, kind of foreboding, but we'll go from there. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, so basically what we're going to be doing in these sessions is just like a quick overview of uh, what's been done in the uh, video lectures, just in case anybody has any questions on anything. We're just going to go through it a lot faster than we do it in the uh, uh, lecture video itself. If you need more detail, that's the lecture videos are available. Uh, these sessions will also be available on the same YouTube channel. They'll actually be added to the playlist as we go along. So. Uh, Let's go ahead and uh, get started here. So it was basically this week was the introduction, talking over syllabus, and the start of the uh, whole class involving with uh, learning how to understand argument. All right. So uh, just as a quick overview here, we're going to go through the syllabus. Uh, there, I have been receiving some questions from folks uh, in regards to uh, due dates to the uh, uh, major essays. Now, uh, this is what I want to get across to you guys here uh, today, at least. Uh, the uh, due dates for those essays are going to be given to you when you get the requirements for those essays. In fact, the, the one for the classical argument, you're going to be getting those, the, that uh, assignment next week. Uh, at that time, you will receive the uh, due date for that. Uh, if you want to try to calculate when the due dates are based on the syllabus, uh, if you take a look, if you take a look at the syllabus, uh, there is a list listing of the schedule for the units in the in the class. Uh, it, it should give you the dates there. Uh, the uh, due dates for the previous units is usually in the first week of the next unit. So, for example, let me just bring my syllabus up here uh, so that I have this to follow along. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I've got the dates here. Okay, so uh, we're showing uh, Unit 1 Classical Argument runs from uh, yesterday to February 12th. Okay, uh, I'm just going to double check here and make sure that I'm telling you the truth. Uh, just bear with me here. Let's see. I have the dates here. Yeah, it's... Yeah, that uh, that is going to be due on uh, February nineteenth, okay, which is the first week of the following unit on the evaluative argument, okay. Uh, the the second assignment is the evaluation. That's going to be due the first week of the next unit, which is anti bibliography. So that's going to be March twenty sixth. The anti bibliography is due the first week of the proposal uh, unit. So that's, uh, 23rd, okay? The only one that doesn't match this pattern is the proposal argument. That's due on the last day of the semester, which is the 7th, okay? But the other due dates for everything else in the class, MindTap and the discussion boards, uh, those are due on the last day of the semester, which is the 7th of May, okay? Uh, you have to have them finished by that time, okay? Uh, if you may remember, if you watch the uh, lecture video, you'll, you'll know I made a mistake on this slide, and it's still from last uh, fall. Uh, the date that you'd have to complete MindTap by is May 7th. Okay, same with the discussion boards. Okay, uh, we have the required text here, Essentials of Writing, 10 Core Concepts. Uh, you can get it in print version. You can get it as a digital e-text. It is also available in MindTap. Uh, in the video, I showed you how to access it through MindTap. That's how, actually how I'm going to be accessing it, uh, because partly because I can't find my instructor's copy, and partly because the chapters in the instructor's copy don't match up with the student copies, because the students get the unabridged version, and they only they only decided to give the instructors an abridged version, so the chapters don't match up. All right, all right. So the is the uh, uh, writing Imagine Create Flow by Ralph Wallstrom. Uh, 
as I mentioned, this is mainly a tool if you want to get it for avoiding writer's block. Uh, the materials is, that I want you to use, Spiral Bound College Ruled Notebook for a writing journal. Uh, you should have a thumb drive for saving papers. You'll need some internet access, obviously. Uh, I see five, five of you are on eCampus doing, doing this session today, so thank you. You guys for sure have internet access, or you need to have a way to get to internet access. So uh, if you can get to a library or a uh, Starbucks or wherever you can get Wi-Fi, okay? You're going to need internet access to do the class, okay? Uh, these sessions will be once weekly. It will be on... I, I did say Thursday afternoons in the slides. That's because that's what they were doing in the fall. Uh, I'm going to set them for this time every week. So it'll be Wednesdays at 1 p.m., okay? Uh, again, if you do not make it to one of these sessions, don't worry about it because they're completely optional. Plus, I'm going to be putting up the videos of these sessions on, the, on our uh, YouTube channel where, where those lectures are located. I have noticed that three people have already subscribed to the YouTube channel, which is probably a good idea. All right. So syllabus highlights are still going on here. Uh, you have the six writing assignments. The first one's going to be the classical argument. Uh, second one will be the evaluative argument. The third one is the anti-bibliography, which is a team project. The fourth one is a proposal argument. Now, if you... If you listen closely to those dates, there's not a lot of space between the when the uh, anti-bibliography is due and the proposal argument is due. That's because basically you're going to be working on those two at the same time. The anti-bib is going to lead into the proposal argument. Okay. Uh, then we have the weekly discussion boards, uh, which includes the uh, video lecture activities. Okay. Those will count towards your grade. Uh, and then the final exam. Uh, late work is going to be, be accepted one week late for full grade. Later turn-ins are penalized 4% for each week that they're late, okay? Uh, that would be equivalent to 2% uh, per each session because typically if you're doing this face-to-face, -face, you'd have two sessions a week with me. Uh, plagiarism penalized with 0% on the assignment. Please don't try to plagiarize because I'm very good at finding it. Okay. All right, attention. Attendance is important. Uh, if you can make it to these collaborate sessions, it's all the better for you. At the very least, you need to participate with the uh, eCampus page. You need to participate with your teammates. Uh, you need to be able to collaborate, uh, okay? Uh, courteous, polite, and open-minded to other viewpoints and discussions. Uh, if you decide to respond to someone's uh, response to a discussion topic. Uh, please try to keep that discussion as civil as possible. I want to make sure that everybody is heard and everybody is able to safely make the point, make their point. Okay. Uh, lectures are done weekly on YouTube. Uh, you may notice that uh, well, when I when I when I upload them to YouTube, I set them as premieres. Uh, so if you are subscribed, you'll get a notification on those. Okay. Uh, each one is going to go live at midnight on Monday of the week. It is four. Okay. Uh, one video lecture covers a week's worth of material. I will be tracking views on those videos. Uh, they're going to be linked with the class slides on eCampus. Hopefully you've seen that already. So you'll be imperative that you, when a new video posts, you need to go view it. Okay, I would also recommend uh, subscribing to the YouTube channel. Uh, again, that way you'll get the notifications when I upload so that you'll know what's coming up, okay? Uh, we're also, I'm also making a playlist of these lecture sessions. Uh, that will be available starting next week uh, as a link on eCampus. Uh, these collaborate sessions will also be on that playlist in addition to being on the channel. All right. Briefly about writing journals. Uh, journals are useful for collecting ideas and practicing writing. Uh, more practice you get, the better you'll be. It's just like sports or music or anything, okay? Uh, a big th the big thing that people don't uh, take into consideration is you have to practice this stuff. You have to have a chance to do some writing in order to get better at it, okay? Uh, as I mentioned, journal entries have no rules. It could be anything that constitutes an idea. Okay, uh, that can include things like song lyrics, interesting facts, quotes, drawings. 
uh, Dreams. It had the story in the uh, lecture about uh, William S. Burroughs uh, tossing his manuscript all over the place that he had written from a dream journal. Uh, a big thing I want you to use these for is practice drafts for your major essays. Uh, use it to help you write, okay? And because of the online nature of the class, journals are going to be on the honor system. I can't really check them, but I highly recommend keeping one. Uh, to be honest, if this was face-to-face, -face, I wouldn't be checking them either because I found that uh, if I tell people I'm checking them, a lot of people cheat with them. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've done journal checks in classes and had people present to me uh, chemistry homework or, chem or chemistry notebooks or anything like that. Uh, basically, stuff that they did for another class, they're trying to pass off as a writing, note, writing journal. Okay? So... Uh, we have the icebreaker uh, task that is on eCampus. Uh, it is under the uh, video lecture activities, okay? Uh, on the mass message board, the topic thread is, is literally called icebreaker, okay? You have to reply to the thread with a short message about yourself. As much as you're comfortable with talking about OTMI responses, though. So uh, stuff like your college, your major, your career goals, uh, the interest, any interest you have outside of academics, uh, where you're from, where you've lived in the past, uh, how much writing you've done in the past, either academic writing or recreational. I would, if you're going to answer this one, I would actually focus on the recreational, uh, anything that you did that wasn't for an assignment. So that I know what kind of experience you have in doing. Uh, uh, I have a question here. All right, well, uh, let's go ahead and move on here. Uh, so this list is not intended to be limiting. Uh, you're, you can elaborate as much as or as little as you like, okay? So however much you want to do. I have seen some people have, all, have posted to this. Uh, they've put some fairly really well thought out uh, uh, responses to this, okay? Uh, so I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, yeah, I've got 36 responses. I've got uh, actually 51 total responses on that particular exercise thus far. Uh, and a lot of people are writing good, good long paragraphs. Okay, so uh, so that's good. Let's move on here. Okay, this is what I'm telling you a little bit about myself. We can go ahead and skip this unless anybody's really interested or has any questions for me or anything. So, uh, otherwise, we can just go ahead and move on. All right, so uh, let's talk about what, an, what exactly is an argument, okay? Uh, as I mentioned here, we're not dealing with this class of the typical definition most people think of, which would very much be classified as a fight, okay? We're not dealing with just having an argument for the sake of arguing. In the formal sense, this arg an argument is a position taken by a writer or orator in a dispute, which they intend to prove using facts, logical reasoning, and refutation of the opposing viewpoint. You are going to be using all the intellectual tools that you can muster to uh, present an argument on your side and try to prove that your opponent's argument is wrong. Okay? Now, composition two is all about forming and presenting arguments in a clear and logical fashion, which in turn make for better writing and more persuasive communication. As we go along in the class, you're also going to find that this also involves critical reading. This also involves critical thinking and being a skeptic when you're reading sources so that you are aware of where gaps may exist in terms of knowledge. Okay? So the, the differences between argument and persuasion. While persuasion is a vital element of an argument, there does not necessarily have to be an argument present for a work to be persuasive. Many times, persuasive writing is simply trying to gain sympathy to their own side, whereas an argument is presenting a logical reason why the arguer is correct. Okay. Uh, 
and you want to be sure that when you're doing a classical argument, you actually have that meat there to present your argument, to present something that sounds knowledgeable, sounds reasonable, uh, sounds like something that a well-read person would uh, argue for that particular situation. Not like somebody's just having a knee-jerk reaction to something, okay? To give you an example of this, I had you look at the uh, textbook page uh, with the two uh, advertisements. One was for Nestle and the other was for a uh, organization that was anti-bottled water, okay? Uh, the Nestle ad was the generally persuasive one because it was more about, be happy, drink our water. Have our have our bottled water. You'll be you'll make your life better. Excuse me, sir. Whereas, Excuse me, sir. Yes. Yes. What um, is it? The people on the video can't hear you. People with the video can't hear me. Yeah, they can't hear you. I'm connected uh, to the cell phone and the video, and the people on the video can't hear you. If you actually uh, log out, if you actually log out and log back in, it lets you hear him now. Because that's that's what was happening to me. So I completely closed it out and logged back in, and it it worked. Okay, yeah. This this thing, this system sometimes has some technical hiccups like that. Uh, right. So, uh, and again, if uh, anybody misses anything, there will be a video of this being posted to the YouTube uh, channel. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you if you need to, you can go back later and find and catch what you missed here. Okay. All right, sir. All right, I'll let them know. Yeah. All right, so uh, we had the example of the two ads. Nestle is being like, let's drink a lot of the bottle of water and make your life happy. Uh, the other one was saying, you know, but water bottles are creating so much pollution here. We need to think about maybe we should keep drinking stuff from the tap, okay? The main difference between a persuasive work and argumentative work is that an argument is intended to advance understanding on the topic, while the persuasive work merely plays on the audience to convince them to think or feel a certain way, okay? So you're intended to, uh, with a classical argument, you need to have a logical basis for it. There has to be some meat to your argument, something that can uh, be uh, proven that uh, there's a reason why this exists, not just uh, an emotional appeal like, I'm gonna make you feel good or I'm gonna make you feel bad, okay? Um, Emotional appeals like that without any kind of ba backing to them uh, are really kind of a bad, really kind of a bad habit that a lot of people have, uh, and especially present in things like advertising. Okay. Uh, so we're talking about arguing to assert a position. Okay, and that's basically what you're doing with the classical argument. One of the most common forms of argument in our modern era of internet media is to assert a position to better clarify where you stand on an issue, okay? Now, Yelsky does give us some examples of times when an argument's primary goal is to assert why action has to take place, okay? Uh, there's four really good examples in the textbook. One of them is trying to justify a boycott of products produced by sweatshop labor, okay? Uh, you're going to... Uh, prove why a boycott is necessary because these people shouldn't be making money off of the uh, backs of basically children who are getting paid slavery wages, okay? Uh, discussing the legalization of same-sex marriage in a class setting, okay? Uh, we're going to talk about this a little bit later in the uh, semester here uh, when we start talking about things like uh, logical fallacies. Uh, this is actually one of the most treacherous topics that you can argue right now, just because of the nature of our society and how polarized people are, okay? So uh, when you're discussing legalization of same-sex marriage in a class setting, hopefully you're doing, doing it in a way that's respectful and calm, hopefully, uh, but you're also trying to do it in an academic sense. You're trying to be more logical and more reasonable about it than somebody who's typically arguing this topic will be. Uh, debating whether to invite a controversial speaker to campus. Okay, uh, There are some times when speakers come and it's somebody that we know is going to uh, instigate trouble or cause people to uh, instigate trouble. 
okay? Uh, there are some times when you get petitions out there where they're saying, do not let this person speak. Uh, they do not have our best interest in heart, things like that, okay? Uh, public forum debates over whether to arm campus police, okay? Uh, if you're trying to a position that the police should be or shouldn't be armed, then you probably want to come armed yourself with some logical backing for that, some kind of uh, reasoning why your side is right, okay? Why should or shouldn't uh, the campus police have firearms, okay? So to better give you a grasp on these purposes, there is a brief exercise that I'm having you do. Uh, you need to post your responses to uh, the video lecture exercises forum. Okay, there is a, there is a t uh, thread for this exercise, okay? So in this case, what we're doing is having you look at at least three social media platforms. Uh, this would be things like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, so on and so forth. Uh, scan the social media platforms in question and locate examples of an argument being asserted by a poster. Uh, one thing I wanted you to do was find one that does not, you don't necessarily have to have a well thought out argument that you have to find. In fact, for the purpose of this exercise, the less logical, the better, okay? I want you to purposely look for a bad argument. And then I want you to choose one of the arguments found and attempt to improve it, okay? Try to make the argument sound more academic in nature and less like an off-the-cuff social media posting. Expand on it if necessary. So improve the language, okay? Improve how it sounds. Improve what uh, be, is being said. Uh, one main suggestion, though, is to not attempt to do this with any argument that you are vehemently against and try to avoid anything patently offensive in nature. And this includes conspiracy theories, okay? I don't want anybody using uh, stuff posted uh, in the service of any kind of weird conspiracy theory for this exercise because those are going to be nearly impossible to justify, okay? So you want to try to improve the argument, make it sound more academic. You also want to make it sound more like it makes sense, okay? Uh, so in the, in the uh, video lecture, I do give you, thir I give you 30 minutes to locate, uh, work on, and rework the argument, okay? Uh, let's talk about how we deal with argument in college. In a collegiate setting, argument is entirely about learning. You're arguing points in order to better understand the general knowledge which inform those arguments, okay? Now, some academic disciplines that rely entirely on argument for their writing content would include fields like economics and social science. Uh, these are all acad academic fields that are purely argumentative in nature because everybody's got a theory to put forth and has to find the evidence to prove that theory, okay? Argument then becomes a primary means of advancing information, okay? Far from being an attempt to pick a fight, an argument is a way to learn, okay? That's one thing that you have to remember here. You don't always have to be right, okay? You don't always have to be right, and you also don't always have to win. There are natural differences between disciplines when it comes to the content of the arguments, but argumentative structure tends to remain consistent, okay? Uh, people are going to find different content to argue about, but they're going to use a similar way of arguing their points. So that gets us to the three main characteristics of argument. These have to be in just about every argument, okay? Uh, one is that you have to have a clear main point that is relevant to the academic discipline, okay? So your thesis argument must be easily discernible to the reader and should be entirely related to the subject in which the argument is being posed. So you can't have space for digressions when it comes to your main point. Your main point has to be what your argument is centered on. That's going to be what you're going to prove. That's what you're, you're, all your reasons are going to aim for. That's what all your evidence is going to aim for. You need to have appropriate support for the claims. You must have reasoning for your claims that follows logically from your argument. Okay? Why do you feel this way? What is the... Uh, what is, is the element that makes this argument right in your eyes, okay? You must also have evidence to back up your reasoning, which must be based on fact, okay? Uh, so in order to back up those reasons why you believe your argument is correct, you also have to have facts 
that make those reasons correct. Okay, it all comes back to fact. Uh, then you have shared assumptions or premises as a basis for the main argument. Okay, you and your opponent in the argument must be able to agree on the base premises of the subject, and be willing to acknowledge certain information as indisputable fact. You must also agree on what the definition of the limits of the argument are, the subject matter, and the credibility of factual sources. Okay, you guys need to be able to agree that certain sources are going to be non-questioned, non-questionable. Okay, these are sources that are providing facts that have been verified. Okay, these are sources that should be reliable to both of you. So when you are working uh, an argument between yourself and another side, both sides should have this shared assumption that certain facts are going to be indisputable. Okay. Now, the last two slides here involved creating teams. So uh, that was one thing I wanted to do in this session. If we have uh, enough people who are willing to do it, uh, you guys can go ahead and try to form teams uh, and exchange information. Now, you can actually do that with the chat function. Uh, if you're on the computer, uh, if you're on the computer, you can do uh, use the chat function for this. Uh, and there is a, pri a private chat where you can send direct messages to uh, individual students. Okay, so uh, if people want to form teams uh, while we're doing the second half of the session, I'm more than willing to welcome that. Uh, but at some point, you need to send me your team names and the list of people who are involved with your team. Okay, now as I mentioned in the video, these teams have to be maintained for the entire semester especially when we get to that anti-bibliography because your team is going to be working together to do that assignment, okay? Uh, but also, throughout the semester, you're going to have multiple workshops that you're going to need to get feedback from your teammates for. Uh, so that's what the other main reason why you have these teams is so that you have a workshop group, okay? Uh, and I want you guys to be exchanging as much feedback as you can when we get into uh, the workshopping of the major assignments. Okay? All right, so that does it for the slides here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, open this up to questions from the class. Now, uh, if you haven't used a, a teleconferencing before, or at least not uh, Black Blackboard Collaborate, there is a raise hand button. Uh, along the bottom of your screen next to the camera control, okay, where it has a camera where you can share video. Uh, if you want to raise your hand, uh, you can click that button. That's Obviously, that's only if you're uh, on the computer and not on the phone. So uh, if you're on the phone, just go ahead and try to get my attention. Uh, I've got the question in the chat. Uh, are we – do we form teams ourselves? Yes, okay. Uh, you're going to be forming your – your teams together. Uh, I'm not going to make them for you. You guys are going to have to talk it over with each other and find uh, your uh, teams. Okay. How many people in a team? The team should be no less than three and no more than five. Okay. Uh, a any smaller, and it's going to be. Uh, any smaller and there's not going to be enough viewpoints any larger and you guys aren't going to be able to get anything done, okay? Assignment due, okay? Uh, depends on which one you're talking about. The discussion boards are due on the last day of the semester. MindTap is going to uh, be due on the last day of the semester. Uh, the first assignment, the classical argument, is due on the 19th of February, okay? Now, we're also going to... Uh, as I mentioned, we're going to uh, have give you the due dates for those assignments when you receive the uh, uh, requirements for those assignments. Okay. For instance, the classical argument, uh, you're going to get those uh, requirements next week. Okay. Uh, it'll give you. It's, I'm going to give you plenty of time uh, to. I will give you plenty. I will should give you plenty of time to complete the assignment. Okay. Uh, 
Let's see. You can form teams on the forum, or you can form them right here. Okay. So uh, when you guys have a when you guys have a team put together, I do need you to let me know when. Let me know who's in the team, and I need you guys to come up with a team name for quick reference. Because once once you do that, then I can set you up with a uh, single thread that you guys can use the the entire semester for uh, team communication. Forum is under the discussion board. There's three forums under that discussion board. Okay, uh, one of them is weekly discussion topics. One of them is video lecture exercises, and then one of them is the team discussion forum. Okay. It might be marked as team discussion threats. Yeah, if you guys are organizing stuff off of uh, eCampus or uh, like that, that would be actually awesome because sometimes people can't keep up if the only way they can uh, contact their teammates is through eCampus. All right, so uh, are there any other questions in regards to either team forming teams or uh, there, or anything involving class? Okay, so I'm sorry, what's that? Uh, I'm trying to figure out who's all in my group. Oh, okay. Let's see. How do we chat privately so I can send everybody my email? Uh, you, I believe you should have a... Uh, uh, oh, oh, I yeah, see, I see should, it. Okay. Yeah, next to everybody's name, there's a little circle with three dots. It's your N10D controls, and then you can send an individual message. Okay, okay. Um, okay, I see it. Yeah. So are we doing... Um, are we doing essays or is it all group? You guys are doing essays, but uh, the groups are for are so that you can workshop those essays, uh, so that you guys can get feedback on them when we're when we're getting through revisions and proofreading. Uh, now there is one team project that you guys are doing in the semester. That's the anti bibliography. Uh, when we get to that, I will give you more detail on that, but it's basically going to be involve the teams doing group research. Okay. It took a while for everybody to start talking to each other. <laughs> yeah. So I do have right, another so, question. Yes. Um, I was looking at the syllabus online, and I didn't – um, any specific dates for the essays or um, um, yeah. the, are you going to 
post those as the time comes? Yeah, we're, that's what I was. That's what I was talking about at the start. They actually at the uh, they are posted when I give you the instructions for those essays. Uh, typically, it's going to be when I give those instructions. They'll be at the end of a lecture or at the end of a set of slides. The classical argument one you're getting next week. Okay, uh, but if you okay. want to do it based on, if you want to do it based on the syllabus, mm -hmm. uh, the easy thing to remember here is that the uh, due date for the essay, with one exception, is going to be the first week of the following unit. Okay, so for example, okay. I'm, I'm looking at the look at syllabus right now. Uh, classical argument runs from yesterday to February 12th. Okay, uh, the classical argument essay is due on the February 19th. Uh, same with unit two, the value of argument, the, uh, it runs February 15th to March 12th, uh, but the uh, essay itself is not due until March 20, 26th, okay? Uh, unit three, anti-bibliography, March 22nd to April 16th, uh, that assignment is due on uh, April 23rd. The proposal argument is due on May 7th because that's the last day of the semester. Andres, okay, um, so as long as, uh, I guess, as long as we're, we check the announcement, um, we should be good on the due dates with that. Yeah, I'll I'll make sure to remind you guys. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, the, I have a question about uh, keeping and turning in a journal. You need to keep a journal. It's basically as a practice uh, measure. Uh, I'm not going to ask you to turn it in, uh, mainly because I'm asking you to keep a physical journal, uh, and I'm really don't need to see your personal writing, but I do want you to practice. Uh, and if you're using the journal to practice the right way, it's going to show in the assignments that you do turn in. Okay, so uh, as I was talking about with the journal, the main thing I want you guys to do with it is use it for brainstorming, for coming up with ideas, for practicing drafts. Okay. Uh, that's the main thing you want to use it for in this class for. And you can throw in anything else that you think of that constitutes an idea. All right, so uh, one other thing I want to do before we uh, wrap up here, I want to uh, uh, show you what I mean about one of the uh, things I'm talking about, and that is uh, the lecture activities, okay? All right, so this is the thread for uh, the lecture activities for this week, which is revising the flawed arguments, okay? So typically I will leave a new thread every week uh, for this. Uh, you want to use the single thread, a single response for every response you have for that week, okay? This, most times there's going to be multiple exercises you're going to do per week, okay? It, gets, it starts off slow in this class, but then as you go later on, there's going to be more and more stuff that's done in the lecture, okay? So, uh, as you can see here, any response for the argument exercise of week one's video lecture, revise the social media arguments that's not only improved its logical base, but also more suitable for an academic environment. Okay. So, let's see what people are doing here, just real quick. Um, let's see. Not basically done, yeah. Let's see. Let's go, let's go with this one here. Uh, 
As reported by local news, President Trump released a video on YouTube stating he did exactly what he planned to do from day one over four years ago. Goes on to mention his accomplishments and the fact that even though his last day is today, the movement he and his supporters started is only the beginning. In the comment section, one commenter argued he achieved so much in four years even though he was not given a chance since the day he was sworn in. This argument could be approved by listing examples of what he achieved, such as pardoning prisoners, improving the economy, etc., and relying on facts instead of opinion. Okay? That's, that's good. Okay? That's a good example here. Uh, you basically have critiqued it. Now, the, the thing is, I do want you to try to rewrite it as well. Okay? Uh, think about what they, uh, how you would, you could phrase it so that it would be more acceptable. Okay? Um, let's see. I have a good ones here. Here we go. Uh, looking back at a specific video I saw on TikTok a while back, it was a woman who said, most men are more disgusted with periods than they are with rape. I would revise that instead to make it more inclusive with the same idea, even daring to instead rewrite it. Should we as a society take the time to recognize issues with deep roots of misogyny, to not only talk more about the provided statement, but analyze it and give more examples of similar topics? Okay, that's a good example, okay? That's a good way of rewriting a uh, really crass and tasteless argument into something that's a little bit more acceptable, okay? Uh, like next one down here. Post on social media said, 12 boy mother is evil for letting her son choose his gender. I would have to rewrite this in order to be respectful to the younger mother living in this new generation where everyone can express their opinion. Change it to, is the mother of a 12 year old boy right for letting her son choose the gender? Something less aggressive to let people actually have to think on which side they will, that they want to choose. Okay. Yeah. You're trying to be a little bit more neutral and not quite as judgy. Okay. Uh, we have one this post on social media said booze to go for good. Texas has a shot at permanently allowing alcohol to go. I revise it and would reward it in the sense of should Texas allow the distribution of alcohol to be taken out of the premises when an individual leaves the facility. In the comments of this certain post, there were many individuals that felt this would reduce the amount of people that try to sneak it out of the building. Now they feel that it would only allow for a bigger access for underage drinking. I feel like I would enjoy writing about this social media argument. Okay. Okay, uh, these are good. These are good examples. Okay, I'll I'll give you that. These are good examples. All right, uh, showing uh, why these are uh, these are al altered uh, arguments that are a little bit more acceptable for the purposes of academic argument. Okay, uh, let's see. All right, I have another question here. Uh, the weekly does do weekly essays due date will be announced to go. Work on mind tap is due for the last day of class. Yes, that's exactly right. Now, technically, the discussion boards are not are also due uh, only do the end of the, at the last day of class. However, uh, the best bet on those is to keep up with them on a weekly basis because you don't want to be doing them all at once. Okay. Now, on top, on top of that, you also have to make sure that the, the posts that you put up on that weekly discussion board uh, are of the proper length that's called for. Uh, the uh, uh, length that I asked for on the uh, discussion board responses is three paragraphs. Okay, That's for the weekly discussions, not for these exercises. These exercises could be whatever length you need them to be. Okay, uh, But the... Weekly discussion topics need to be three paragraphs in length, okay? So just just so we're clear on that. All right, so uh, so that gives you an idea of what we're talking about in terms of revising the, the flawed arguments, okay? Uh, so yeah, we've got 31 people who are posting to the team discussion threads trying to form teams, so that's good. That's really good. Uh, and we got uh, more discussion topic posts, okay? Uh, one other thing with the discussion boards, uh, I did notice that we had one post that was made outside of the original thread. As much as possible, I'm watching the post as replies to the thread, okay? Uh, try not to uh, post it as another uh, thread because that's actually going to make this thing way unwieldy uh, and uh, it's going to make it very hard for me to grade it when I get to grading it, okay? so. Yeah, I think they're doing uh, I'm sorry? Oh, somebody, uh, Dahlia was asking, are these lecture exercises due weekly also? 
Uh, there are going to be new ones weekly. It's this is the same the same deal like the discussion boards, the discussion topics. The actual due date is the end of the semester, uh, but again, you're going to be getting new ones every week. Yeah. So you probably don't want to keep up with them. Yeah, you don't want to fall behind. Yeah, I, yeah, I would not, especially on these. I would not suggest trying to do them all at the end of the semester uh, because you're going to be picking. 19 hours worth of video footage to find the exercises. So uh, yeah. you don't want to be doing that at the last minute. All right. All right. So if there's any other questions, go ahead and uh, set, go ahead and raise your hand. Send them out to me. Uh, the collaborate sessions will be weekly. Okay, uh, these meetings are optional, so they don't. So I don't actually count them toward the grade. Uh, mainly, they're mainly optional because not everybody can attend them. Uh, so I do want to allow you guys to uh, have some face-to-face -face time with me, so that uh, we can actually talk things over. You guys have a chance to ask questions to me in person. Uh, as close in person as we can do here, uh, but uh, you're always you're always welcome to email me if you have any other concerns that just come up outside of these sessions. Okay, uh, so just keep that in mind. So that's pretty much it. We can log out if we want to. Uh, yeah, if you want to. I mean, I'm going to stay here for a little bit, for about uh, 10 more minutes uh, in case anybody has any questions. Uh, oh, okay. But I'm pretty much done with the session here. Okay. All right. Well, nice meeting you. All right. Thank you. All right.